All right, what up, YouTube? Here with Talk Boxing, episode seven. Y'all see the title here to talk about the future of the middleweight division. Um, first things first, I'm here to cover the Jamie Munguia Gabriel Rosado fight. Now, this was one entertaining fight. Um, I was gonna say competitive. It was competitive, as in like as far as the action goes, like the back and forth uh, within the fight. And um, that's what that's what you can expect. Uh, when you have two uh, come forward aggressive uh, brawlers in the same ring, and that's what we had with Jamie Mongia and Gabe Rosado. It was back and forth. They were throwing punches and bunches, seeing uh, who would get the best of the exchange. And Jamie Mongia happened to get the best of the exchanges. Um, he was he was show superiority when it comes to you know putting his punches together and um, uh, throwing combos and just overall power um, as far as you know who who packs the more more power in their punches. Jamie Mongia had the upper hand when it came to that, and um, I, I I had the fight score uh, ten to two in favor of Jamie Mongia. I say. I gave Rosado the round eight and round ten, and then the rest of the fight went to Jamie Munguia. Um, like I said, it was a brawl. Jamie Munguia, I'm impressed by his power, his volume, and his output of punches that he puts together, and of course his combo as well. And yeah, I would say this was man. Um, Jamie Munguia's toughest opponent on his resume, mind you. Jamie Munguia is. Undefeated, dude is thirty eight and zero. He's got a scheduled fight coming up, um, um, next month, uh, uh against uh, Demet Demetrius Ballard in his hometown of Tijuana. I have no idea who Demetrius Ballard is. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, but I don't know who he is. Apparently, he's undefeated, twenty one and zero with one draw, and that's who he is scheduled to fight next. Now. This isn't a knock to Jamie Mungia. Like I said, he's an uh, entertaining fighter. His fight against Gabriel Rosado, they put on a hell of a fight. And like I said, Gabe Rosado is one of those gatekeepers at at, 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 at middleweight. He's like one of these like well-known gatekeepers in the sport. He's been around for a long time, has fought the toughest opposition, and he's still around, and he's still one of these guys that these up-and-coming champions uh, go against to uh, see if they could, you know, climb amongst the ranks for the for the elite spots in the sport. And you know, Rosado, you know, he don't back down. He's got, you know, a great chin, and he could absorb it. Uh, you know, uh, any 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 fighter's punches within his weight class, and he showed that against Mongia as well. But Gabe Rosado, he he's he's got double digit L's on his record, and that's I don't mean that with all due respect. Like I said, I just bigged him up as far as you know uh, who he is uh, in the sport. His his position is solidified, and he's a solid fighter. And that's I would say by far the most recognizable, if not the most uh, valuable name, most uh, toughest name that Jamie Mongia has on his resume. Who else has he fought? Um, Liam Smith, Saddam Ali. I mean, those guys were, yeah, but, you know, like, those are, like, the top three names that I could think of uh, for Jamie Munguia as far as, you know, um, um, as far as his top quality opponents goes on his record. Now, he's been the WBO in a middleweight champion for, for some time now, um, 38 and 0, he's only 25 years old, young dude, and um, we all know who the legit, real WBO middleweight champion is, and that's uh, Demetrius Andrade. Now, if you're the interim, right, champion of, um, of, of whatever sanctioning body of, of, of that weight class, right, that means you're next in line to challenge the real champion of that sanctioning body uh, for that, for that, for, for the title. That, that's that's what it means. So, Jamie Munguia has been in line to challenge for Andrade's title for some time now. And Andrade 
his biggest criticism that he faces from the fans and other top fighters that he wants to go after is that he he ain't fought nobody uh in, like ever like he fought what Vanis Martirosian he fought Liam Williams he was supposed to fight Billy Joe Saunders and then Billy Joe Saunders had tested positive for some pets and that fight couldn't have happened they, that was supposed to be a big fight two undefeated middleweight fighters fighting for a title that was supposed to be huge that was that should have catapulted both their careers as y'all know Billy Joe. Um, he he's well recognizable, and fortunately for Billy Joe Saunders, um, he he comes from England where they actually care about their local scene of of for boxing. In America, it's only certain certain uh, areas, certain states, and certain cities that that that's you know uh, 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 big on boxing. And Andrade, he's from what, like Rhode Island or something like that. He be he be fighting in you know like New Hampshire and, and places like that. Like he he doesn't he comes from a small city where where it's not where, where they're not super big on boxing. It's not a marketable area, and he he just cannot get recognizable names and 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 and. and and top names in the sport in his weight class at least to get in the ring with him. He tried with Canelo. He he was on some you know like like you know thirsty shit. No offense. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say it anyways. He was on some thirsty shit. Try and get that fight against Canelo, who's the cash cow of the sport. He's the top dog when it comes to you know uh, uh the, the, the boxing, boxing. Sport period, like that's the most recognizable name since the Mayweather Pacquiao era, and he, you know, what Canelo told him, you ain't fought nobody, and and unfortunately, I would say that's you know that's kind of true, just like Jamie Munguia, and I mean that with all due respect for both of these champions, and Andrade, I I wouldn't say it's 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 his fault completely, you know, he's in a a. a Certain pocket of the country where 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 they're not super big on boxing, so he doesn't draw like that. He's in an area where they don't, you know, draw like that at all. Where it's not that marketable, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's like you know he he just in a bad spot. He's got the right promoter. He's got Eddie Hearns. He's got the zone beyond him. Now he's getting more recognition. Uh, he like as far as people who are tapped in with the sport of boxing, he's been. You know, recognize he's been a face in the sport that the the hardcore boxing fans have been talking about for some time now as as one of them dudes. And um, his fight with Jason Quigley, he made quick work of dude. Um, um, he 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 had like a record similar to guys that you know he fought previously on his record. Um, like Liam Williams, Lou Keeler. He you know Jason Quigley prior to the Andrade fight. I think he he um what you call it? He only had a uh, one defeat. He's been knocked out before. I think he got stopped by I, I don't know who. Um but yeah, other than other than that, um he he's only had one loss heading into this fight. He was coming off a fresh win against uh, Shane Mosley Jr. via majority decision on the undercard for Andrade's last fight before getting in there with Quigley. Um and that, that put quickly in line to challenge Andrade for the WBO middleweight title. But Andrade uh, stopped him in, in two rounds, uh, knocked him down. Um, Y'all saw the fight, made quick work of dude. Um, Andrade, um, he, he's like, I would say, the most avoided fighter. And I don't know if I have said this before. I don't think I made a video on Demetrius Andrade on this channel. But when I be talking to my, you know, uh, 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 homies and shit about boxing, uh, we, we talked about this before, and I'm going to say this uh, on, on a video on, on, on my channel right here. And I'm going to say Andrade is like the most avoided fighter due to, the, due to the fact that he is high risk, undefeated fighter, very talented, got the... Got the boxing skills, the technical fundamentals, um, good footwork, 
uh, decent power, undefeated, like I said, athletic, and he's uh, low reward. He doesn't draw like that. He's not a, a, a cash cow uh, in the sport. He's not even the top draw at 160 pounds. And frankly, the middleweight division is lukewarm. It's not a hot division. It's one of the least entertaining divisions in the sport right now. You have champions at that weight class not willing to fight each other. Like, you have Triple G, Gennady Glovkin, who's the IBF, or is he the IBF? I think he's the IBF um, uh, middleweight champion who's in his 40s now, I believe. I think he just hit 40. And, you know, I, with all due respect, Triple G, he's past his prime, in my opinion. I think he shows sign of um, uh, his age um, uh, in, his, in his last fight. He was supposed to fight uh, Morata at the end of uh, 2021 last year, but due to the Omicron, uh, Japan wasn't allowing foreigners to come to the country, and that fight was supposed to take place in Japan. Hence why that Triple G Morata unification title fight for the WBA and IBF middleweight title didn't go down. I don't know if they're going to uh, continue to uh, uh, fight and part of part of me for the pause bear with me um i don't know if they're gonna go ahead and and, and continue to fight and you know uh had this unification title fight happen as they should or if they put a whole cancel on it it wasn't uh, a pause on on, on the uh, marada glovkin fight they had you know they might have just canceled it uh all in all but that would be bad for the sport and then you also have um Jamal Char Jamal Charlo, and he's the top draw. I say after Gennady Golovkin. I say nowadays they're both up there. Gennady Golovkin kind of uh, lost his hype a little bit um, after the second fight against uh, Canelo Alvarez. Like y'all know, um, he his most two notable fights um, is against Canelo Alvarez and. You know, after after uh, his L against Canelo Alvarez, which was very close, by the way, and I believe they should have the third fight. They should have they they should have had made the third fight with Canelo and Triple G, but for whatever reasons, I don't know if it's politics, promotional issues, or some pick and choose shit. I don't know why they didn't go ahead and make a third fight between the two fighters because both fights were like questionable. You had a lot of people saying Triple G won the first and second fight, and vice versa. So to clear the air, I say you know they should have had the third fight. But now at this point, after how Triple G has been performing uh, uh, since the Canelo loss, he's he's been he's been showing signs of of his age, and you know Father Time is undefeated. And with that being said, um, that brings me now to. Um, Ryota Murata and and Jamal Charlo. Now Ryota Murata, I don't know too much about him. You get what I'm saying? Um, he's big in Japan. He's a former Olympic gold medalist. He won the Olympic gold medal back at the 2012 London Olympic Games for the middleweight division. So he fights at a weight class where he's comfortable at. Um, but I, I I mean, who who has he really fought? He's got two L's on his record. He lost. Before to Rob Brandt, uh, and that's when uh, he came back and fought. Uh, I said came back. He he went to America to fight, and he lost that fight via decision. I didn't see that fight, but then he went on to go avenge that loss and regain his WBA middleweight title by defeating uh, Rob Brandt in in the rematch via TKO. Then in his most recent fight, he fought Stephen Butler, uh, and and he knocked him out as well. Now um. He's got uh, 16 wins, 13 wins by knockout, so he carries some power in his punches. So that's why him and Gennady Golovkin, should, stylistically speaking, should be a uh, entertaining, entertaining fight. And as far as the WBC champion Jamal Charlo goes, I say at least in America, um, he's undefeated. He draws very well in his home state of Texas. Um, he, I would say, like now, like you know, he's probably 
the most recognizable name at 160. Um, he's like one of the, I think, you know, him, him and his brother, like, they're like the only successful twins, and they're like the, the spin-off, the lighter weight classes of the Klitschko's, like two brothers who are champions at their own respective division, even though I know the Klitschko's fought at the same weight class, but they were both champions in their own. You get what I'm saying? Jamal Charlo, though, on the other hand, I mean, he, he has 32 wins, no defeats, but man, same thing goes for Jamal. I would say, you know, other than Julian Williams, Austin Trout, and Cornelius Bunridge, like, like you know, he's a former champion, but, you know, man, he's like one of those, like, gatekeepers at that weight class as well. Like, that, that, that was his position uh, with all due respect. And, you know, like I said, these three guys, I would say, is like the most recognizable names on Jamal Charlo's record. And him and PBC has, I believe, in my opinion, has not put in the effort to to try and unify or to try and get other champions. That's the one thing I noticed about PBC in general, that they don't try and reach out to work with other promotions to make the fights that needs to happen for the better sake of the sport. You get what I'm saying? And for, for these fighters, truthfully speaking, if they want to build the build a big legacy behind the fighters that they promote and and and, and if y'all wanna make money, uh y'all 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 need to make these big fights happen so y'all fighters can get paid. And the middleweight division man, you know, it got talent like I said. And also I can't uh I, I forgot to mention Arislandi Lara, a veteran. He's the WBA regular middleweight champion. Um, and that puts him in line to, you know, uh, challenge possibly the winner of Blufkin and Murata. And Laura is one of the most avoided fighters in the sport, period. Not not only in the middleweight division, but in the sport, period. Because he's like uh, Andrade as well, where high risk, low reward. Like, he doesn't draw at all, but he's a dangerous fighter, stylistically speaking. And... He's very skillful and very technical, uh, uh, for and that 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 calls for a dangerous fighter for anybody who who gets in there with Arislandi Lara. Canelo had trouble with him. Anybody who he's fought uh, has had trouble with him. And with that being said, you know he's also in the mix. And Charlo should fight Arislandi Lara, truthfully speaking, because they're both promoted by PBC. Anyways, that does it for uh, me covering the 160-pound division. Now let's move on to the uh, last thing that I'm going to cover on this episode of Talk Boxing. Now, this isn't the 160-pound division, but middleweight nonetheless, but we're talking about the super middleweight division. David Benavidez, a former two-time uh, super middleweight champion. I think he was recently stripped of his uh, WBO title. That's why it was vacant and Canelo won it. Um, Canelo, y'all know, he's coming off that win against Caleb Plant. He's the undisputed super middleweight champion right now. Um, I forgot to mention uh, during the post-fight video of the Canelo Plant fight that um, who should be in line to challenge Canelo for the undisputed title next. Uh, I forgot to mention this dude, David Benavidez. He's undefeated, mind you. He's undefeated. Um, I'm, I'm cover his fight against Kyron Davis. That was a uh, entertaining fight as well. David Benavidez was definitely getting uh, the better of uh, of Kyron Davis throughout the fight. Kyron Davis showed incredible heart. Um, showed uh, a valiant, resilient effort. Showed that he was determined. Was fighting back, showing defense, but. Benavidez showed uh, superiority when it came to power. Um, uh, he, he, he was landed the more effective shots. Um, Kyron Davis, he would have an answer for uh, Benavidez's punches and his onslaught, but he just couldn't keep Benavidez off of him, much like how like the rosado Mongia fight have went. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, 
Kyron Davis is cornered throwing the towel for those of y'all that 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 watch the fight. Y'all know what happened. Um, his corner has seen enough of him, you know, getting punished in the ring, and yeah, that called a halt to the bout. Um, David Benavidez undefeated, like I said, former champion. He's twenty five and no, twenty two knockouts. He's got power in his punches. Um, and yeah, um, I know he wants his title back. He, he defeated Anthony Durrell via knockout, beat Jamie in love, coming off a win against Kyron Davis in his most recent fight. Um, Kyron Davis was also smaller in the, the like as far as size and their stature goes. That's you know that also you know might have had uh, something to do as far as you know uh, how both fighters were reacting to each other's punches. Uh, but nonetheless, um, David Benavidez, like, that's who should be in line uh, to challenge with Canelo's undisputed crown next. I forgot to mention that. I don't know why his name didn't, you know, uh, come up in my brain for me to, you know, say as far as, you know, uh, uh, who could potentially be next for Canelo's uh, uh, opponent. Now, um, with that being said, undefeated 25-0. Twenty-two knockouts. Um, he he's got some buzz going for himself. One sixty-eight. Like the middleweight division is a weight class where it's like, it's it's not the most entertaining. It's not the most stacked. Um, but it's still some potential fights out there. The champions, like I said, all fight each other at one sixty. You can make some entertainment out of that. You could grab the fans' attention out of that when you make compelling, intriguing fights like that. And as far as Canelo goes, um, this is probably why I got distracted from talking about David Benavidez possibly being his uh, future opponent as far as, you know, me uh, t talking about who could be next with Canelo um, because Canelo was talking about he was going to move up to Cruiserweight to challenge for the WBC Cruiserweight title to try and become five divisional world champion and yeah that that had threw me off or whatever so that's why i forgot to mention david benavidez but that's who i think truthfully canelo should fight next and you know uh, and then after that you know i say canelo could retire like he's made enough money i was saying that during the post fight uh coverage of the canelo plan fight and Canelo truthfully could have retired after that, but I think that David Benavidez should be next. But that does it for episode seven. I'm done rambling. I'm done chatting. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all thoughts are uh, on this uh, uh, subject that I cover on this episode. Uh, subscribe, share if y'all want. Y'all stay safe, stay healthy, and peace.